Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another Hot Toys 1-6 scale Star Wars figure unboxing and review. Today we're taking a look at Boba Fett based off his appearance in Book of Boba Fett. I know the show was pretty divisive, but sometimes the figures based off divisive shows can transcend the media they're from, so I'm still pretty excited to get this guy out here. Now I got mine from ToysWonderland.com, link for that is in the description below. They have pay in four and a loyalty program. While you're down there, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon and join button so you're notified as soon as a brand new Hot Toys review goes live on the channel. As for the box art, I have a bad feeling about this. I don't see an image of an unhelmeted head sculpt anywhere. Now I'd completely forgotten that this guy potentially doesn't come with a Tamura Morrison head sculpt, and we will address that in just a second. Up front, an image of the figure himself, a metallic silver foil Star Wars logo, then on the yellow wraparound banner featuring Boba's palace to signify Book of Boba Fett, another image of the figure, plus another Star Wars logo and his name. So, uh, yeah. To put it simply, I had forgotten that this guy does not come with an unhelmeted head sculpt. Hot Toys, did we watch the same show? Because in Book of Boba Fett, like 99% of the time, dude did not have his helmet on. I'm not sure why they made the choices they did. I want to do a deep dive on that when we get the figure himself out here. On the side of the box, the wraparound banner continues to wrap around. It is glossy on an otherwise satin finished box, and there's another image of Boba Fett, this time with his rangefinder down. Around the back, kind of nothing. We've got his name, warnings and legal info, and a couple of Hot Toys store locations. Oh, this is more like it. Boba Fett versus Cad Bane, sparks flying as his gaffy stick whacks into Cad Bane's gauntlet, and the Slave One lurking up there in the background. I love this image. This totally should have been on the front cover. Okay, I think I cracked it. The reason why they decided not to give this guy an unhelmeted head sculpt now that we actually have him out here? Simple, really. Money. They made way too many versions of Boba Fett way too quickly. We had the Roba and Boba 2 pack, then we had the Mandalorian version with the throne, and then we had the quarter scale version, but we, we won't talk about that one. Now we have this one. So to try and get you to pick up all of the Bobas, they had to cherry pick which figures got the accessories that people wanted. The throne came with the throne version and you got the head sculpt, then with the Roba and Boba 2 pack you got the gaffy stick and the sculpt. With this one, you get the gaffy stick but no sculpt, so see what they're doing? They're trying to get you to buy as many Bobas as possible. Did it work? For me, yeah it did because I am all in on Boba Fett. Everyone knows this guy is my favourite character in all of Star Wars. In-hand impressions are pretty darn good, he feels nice and sturdy. I'm noticing a couple of differences between this one and the throne version, I cannot wait to do comparisons. What we are going to do now though is get all of his accessories laid out in the light box and take a closer look at everything he comes with. Starting off unfortunately with the display base first. Somehow the sand footprint display base returns. Just like Boba Fett, how he won't die crawling out of the Sarlacc, same thing can be said for this stupid sand footprint display base. If you're wondering why it's such a problem, it's sculpted well, I like the texture and the undulations of the sand, and it's well painted with multiple different shades of yellow and white and black speckled in there. But because you have the footprints in fixed positions, kind of sort of have to have his feet in those pre-posed spots. Otherwise, because the surface is all kinds of lumpy and bumpy, if you have his feet resting anywhere else, they'll be sticking up or sticking down into the display base at an angle, not making a ton of sense when you look at it. That's why I don't like the sand footprint display base. I don't think any bases should tell you how to pose your figures. This, just not on. Around the front, Star Wars and Boba Fett on an etched nameplate. And up on top, a flight pole, with a spring-loaded waist clamp. Seeing as though this display base is compatible with a crotch grabber, I really would have liked to have had the option of that as well. Just let it go. Why are we still here? Who at Hot Toys loves this style of display base? Clearly there's someone, otherwise they wouldn't keep using it over and over and over again. The first time you used it, it wasn't good. And spoiler alert, it sure as shit is not good the hundredth time either. It's not suddenly gonna work for people. At least not for me, maybe you like it, who knows. 
The flamethrower effect, though, is good. It's a shrunk down version of the one we literally just got with the quarter scale Book of Boba Fett Boba. There's flow to it, it flares up towards the flames up on top, and it kind of looks like the fuel is spiralling as it's being ejected out of his gauntlet. It does connect up in an interesting way, and you will see what that looks like a little bit later. Compared to the Cheeto flamethrower effect from the previous Boba releases, it's a night and day difference. The new one, it just looks so much better. And it's painted better. It's blue, then it's purple, then it's yellow, and then it's this rich, fiery orange. If you light it correctly because it is translucent plastic, it's optically clear enough that it will cast an orange hue onto Boba for figure photography. These should look pretty familiar at this point. Any Mandalorian that comes with a jetpack also features these exact same blast effects. They are cast in translucent orange plastic. I'm enamoured with this gaffy stick, and I know it's not the first time we've seen it, it still does not take anything away from how good this looks. The bottom portion that's supposed to be metal is plastic, it's a little bit flexible in fact. It still looks like metal, it's nice and shiny and metallic as the light hits it. And there's some speckling of rust work on the surface that is textural, you can feel it. It does come across like rusty, dirty metal. You do have some grips sculpted in and washes in the crevices. My favourite detail is this little piece of string over the top, also sculpted. Got some wood grain effect printed on the surface. And up top, this is stunning. Does feel a little bit fragile though, so when you're trying to wedge this into his hands, please be careful. It does come with this little clamp piece that you do use to holster this on Boba, and you'll see how that works when we put this on him. Wouldn't it be cool if one day, instead of just going with a straight metal rod for the grappling line, they actually went with posable wire? That way you could give it a little bit of a flow, a zigzag to it, so it actually looks like it's being shot out of the gauntlet, not just a straight line. This is still good, it could have been great. The hook part is painted in this shiny metallic, and you've got some blue down below, plus some airbrush shading just on the tip to dirty it up a little. We've actually seen the sculpts for both the rifle and the pistol with previous versions of Boba. It's sharp all the way around, and I particularly like the pistol, it's just very visually interesting. There's this big silver gash on the side, and there's also some finer speckling of silver dry brushing just to bring out the high spots and all the little details, like the tips of the barrels. Then for the rifle, so much silver dry brushing and so much detail, this thing looks awesome. Even down to the texture on the grip. But my favourite detail is actually around the front. Giving the barrel this purple tint and some pops of gold, it makes it look like this thing has been fired a lot and the metal has become discoloured because of that. There's also some greebly detail on the stock on one side but not the other so it's asymmetrical and some wood grain printed on the surface, just like the gaffy stick. And lastly, hands. Open palm hands, trigger finger hands, gaffy stick holding hands, and also one under barrel gun cupping hand. But no closed fists for some reason, a very weird choice, which we will discuss, don't worry. The sculpt work is exceptional. These are actually all new. Compared to the previous Boba hands, these were actually reused from Mando, that's why the armour plate wasn't quite the right shape and there was no texture. These, they're completely smooth, they're waxy, they're glossy looking, and compared to the new ones, I just cannot get over how good the new ones look. So much more texture, you've even got some ribbing on the fingers, and some wrinkling, they genuinely look like real gloves. What we are going to do now though, is get Boba Fett himself out here. Standing straight up and down in the light box, no crazy poses or accessories or anything like that. My word, does this guy look good. And I didn't think I was going to be this enamoured. I was sceptical at the start. You heard me. I was like, ooh, I don't know. He doesn't come with an unhelmeted head sculpt. Who cares about that? Look how good this guy looks. He fills out the suit like an absolute boss. A crime boss, perhaps. Too soon? Nevertheless, the proportions, they are on point. He looks like a real dude, shrunk down, standing in front of me in 1 6 scale. And this version of Boba Fett's new Disney look, I think they finally perfected it. Going with the more saturated green with the pops of red, blue, gold and yellow, and then the rich contrasting black bodysuit and the pops of tan leather, 
there's a cowboy feel about this. I don't know if you're picking up on that vibe, but I certainly am, and it totally works for me. Up close and personal, kicking things off with Boba's helmet. Initially, I thought they'd just take this helmet, ditch the texture, then paint it differently for this new one. They didn't. It's a completely new head sculpt. The overall shape and size is different, the new one is taller and narrower, the visor is also skinnier, and they've added a little bit of extra detail behind the rangefinder. Some clear plastic and a viewing window. It still articulates down just the same, and it's very smooth. Look at that go up and down. The visor is a separate piece of glossy black plastic inset into the mold, so there's an actual shadow cast by the gap between the two pieces. My favourite bit of battle damage is this massive scratch on the front. I want to know how he got that. How do you go from being this clean, freshly repainted to looking like this in a very short space of time, I might add? We've also got some dirt and grime in the mandibles, a pop of chrome silver for his comms port, and around the back, we do have the vent work, some feathered, darker shading of green. They've also adjusted the base screen for the helmet. Now, it is significantly more saturated. They've also done away with the darker green on the back. Now, the entire helmet, except for the ears and the mandibles, just all one color of green with a little bit of gradiented shading. Dude, this kind of just makes me sad more than anything else, really, because chances are, if you don't have one of the previous Bobas that came with this head sculpt, you're never going to get to see your figure like this, and that's unfortunate because this looks absolutely incredible. The head sculpt is compatible, this is the throne version, and the Robo Boba 2 pack is also the exact same sculpt, so it'll pop on the neck connector no problem. And the scarf being wired, that helps because you can bring it down and expose a little bit more of his skin toe neck, helping with the proportions. They've even detailed the inside of the helmet, so they knew that chances are you did have this head sculpt, and you'd probably want to display it on this body. Because in the show, most of the time, he was unhelmeted. Back to the helmet. So remember how I said it's a different mold to the throne version? It is. I just happen to prefer the throne one. I like the proportions on this helmet better. It just screams original trilogy Boba. Whereas this new one is just too streamlined, too sleek looking. Still cool, just this one is my preference. And if you want to get a closer look at all that detail underneath the helmet, yeah, it is fully sculpted and painted in there. You've got the padding, you've got the little ear cups, and you even have some detail around the visor. That is next level. For something that you normally wouldn't really be able to see anyway. Oh, and I did mention the wired scarf. Now that the helmet is back on, you don't really get to see a ton of it. So the wires, they're great to have. They're not essential if you have him with the helmet on. Oh, hello, beautiful. This jetpack is outstanding. It's also completely different as compared to the throne version and all of Boba's previous jetpacks. We do still have the panel of sorts underneath this detail in the middle. Now they've added blue and they've made it a little bit flatter, and they've added some vent work on the sides, and the entire jetpack is wider. There are some pops of gold, and there's still that metallic shiny silver. The attachment method, completely different. Now there's no straps, there are magnets still, but there's this lock and key mechanism. Oh, and they've added this swooshing in design around the back, so the vent work is exposed when you look up under Boba if he's on the flight pole, and they've added some dirt and grime, some speckling here and there, and the panel lining. This jetpack all the way around is just very pretty. So to attach it, you still want to use the magnets, but now you want to guide the pins into the locking and keying mechanism, then you want to slide it down and push it in place. As you do that, oh now it's so secure, this jetpack is not going anywhere. You can adjust the thrusters down below, and you can plug in the blast effects. They also go in very smoothly. Previously, I have had to fight these, and these are a hazard. They are very prickly. As you're trying to push them in, usually you are spiking yourself. With these ones, smooth as butter. They go in no problem. I was curious to see if the rocket firing effect from the Boba Rover 2 pack was compatible. While it plugs into the jetpack just fine, it's not compatible with the missile. There is a peg port in there. It's just very recessed, so you can't actually connect it to the effect. If you use some blue tack, maybe. Is it the end of the world? No, not really. At the very least, you can still remove the rocket. 
and they've added some sculpt work down the bottom and put washers in those crevices, where in reality, you're never really going to be able to see that detail. One more thing while we're back here, you can install this bracket piece to hold his gaffy stick. There's a little bit of velcro on the inside, you want to wedge it behind the back plate, then push everything down to lock the velcro in position. After that, you can just bring in the gaffy stick and plug it right on in. It holds in place very securely. This attachment method is way better than the Beskar Spear with Mando. This is nowhere near as loose as that was. There's still a little bit of play to it, which is good for posing, not enough for it to fall out on its own though. Around the front, we'll get to the armour, I just want to talk about the flight suit quickly. In fact, all of the fabric here is proper fabric. There's no screen printing, there's no ribbing, there's no bullshit. It's just simple, straight fabric, great for posing. We do have a little bit of padding underneath the armour, that's okay, he was quite a bulky boy in the Book of Boba Fett. We've got multiple layers, and we will see how that impacts articulation a little bit later. You do have the shoulder pads tucked up underneath these sections, you also have the Mythosaur skull, then around the front for the armour. The green is more saturated compared to the throwed version. And even this armour is new, all of that sculpted texture is completely gone, these panels they're nice and smooth. You also have scratching and pitting and battle damage, especially down here, look at all that scratching, this guy has been through some shit. You also have the little screens with some lettering printed on there, I can't quite make out what that says, but that's a really small little detail. Then the FET symbol is of course present, as it should be. This is interesting. So remember how with previous Bobas this was always the comms panel and the dart projector, then around this side this was the flamethrower because the cables that connect the jetpack to the gauntlet delivering fuel so that he can use it as a flamethrower? Apparently not anymore. Now you remove this little silver piece that used to be removed on previous Bobas for the hologram projector, and that's where you install the flamethrower, you literally insert it into that crevice. It doesn't really want to go in all the way, so I'm going to leave it like that. It's a convincing effect though, and when you light it correctly, because of how translucent it is, it picks up the light beautifully. Seeing as though the left side is now the flamethrower, that leaves the right side for the grappling line attachment. The rod is real metal, and technically it is infinitely adjustable. You are just sliding it in between the body and the outfit so it's tucking into the sleeve. So as long as there's enough room in the sleeve, you can push it as far in as you like. You can also pull it out if you want to extend it a little. For me, the hand selection just doesn't really sell this. Having an open palm hand instead of a closed fist, which this guy really should have come with, I don't like this combo for a grappling line shooting pose. Not really a deal breaker, unless of course that was the only pose you had in mind, then maybe it is. His belt area is new, you've got this grey rope over the top of this brown pleather, you can see a little bit of it poking up over the top. This big, shiny gold belt buckle with some sculpt work on the surface to add some visual interest. And a patina wash, just to dull it down a little. Still metallic and shiny enough to pick up the light. You also have some sculpted pouches, not in pleather, these are plastic and some canisters on one side that are not removable. Around the back, a bunch more canisters and a bunch more gold, look how shiny that is. His holster is made of pleather. I did check, it did say leather-like material on the Hot Toys website, so I'm going to go with pleather. If this is real leather, which I hope it is, then it's going to last longer. As it stands right now, I think this is pleather. You do have a magnet holding the strap in position, and getting the blaster in is non-trivial. There's this little button that sticks out, trying to get that behind the flap of the holster. Just take your time, the last thing you would want to do is snag this pleather on the blaster as you're sliding it in. When you see the tips of the barrels sticking out down below, you know you've done it right. There's a strap over the thigh, and you've also got a little bit of a gradient of speckling and dirt and grime around the edges, just to make it look slightly weathered. I guess Boba got sick of his knee pads never being in the right position because he's added some alternative knee pads, you've got some ribbing around the front. Then the pieces of armour with dart projectors on the side, they sit a little bit lower. Now they are adjustable, so technically you could move them up, but when you do, he does look a little bit skinny above his boot. Technically they are supposed to sit right around here. Just like the throne version, they sat nowhere near his knees. It's also an asymmetrical design, you've got a pocket on one side but not on the other. 
around the back for his karma. Multiple layers, this tattered black fabric, I am worried about it fraying down below. And then underneath that, this very satin papery material. Not quite sure why this is here, and I would have liked to have seen some wires in the skirt. The pants, full fabric with a little bit of padding underneath. Then coming down to his boot guards, they look like pleather. They're not, these are fully sculpted and they look fantastic. Got a zipper, sculpted down the side, some stitching, leather grain and washers in all of the sculpted detail. This looks believable, it actually looks like real material. Then the boots underneath, they're a new sculpt. You've also got sandy washers over the top so he looks like he's been stomping around on Tatooine. Then on the underside, some fully sculpted tread. For a quick side-by-side -side comparison, I'm pretty sure this is the one you've all been waiting for because I certainly have. On the right, Throne Boba, and on the left, Book of Boba Fett Boba, who is a little bit taller than the Throne one, and I think that's just because of the boot sculpt and also the neck connector. The bodies themselves, I'm 99% sure, are identical. The proportions are very similar. He's bulky where he needs to be, yeah he is significantly more slim down at the legs because they have ditched the baggy pants. I like the Tuscan look on the right, it's just that having Boba look sleeker and adding in all those tan leather accents on the belt and down at the boots, dude looks like a freaking cowboy badass. So my personal preference, while I do still like the throne one, I gotta go with the new Book of Boba Fett version. Then again, if you're factoring in accessories, you don't get anywhere near as much stuff as you do with the throne version. And if you like the old school original trilogy style helmet, you might be leaning towards the one on the right. It's just down to personal preference. Next up, Sarlacc Boba. This guy, he kicked everyone's asses. All of the stormtroopers. No question. You were done. If you were in Boba's way, you had no chance. How do you go from that to being nerfed so freaking hard in your own show? I have no idea what happened. Sarlacc Boba is a little bit shorter and his armor is significantly more weathered. There are more similarities between the guy on the right versus the throne one as compared to these two. They are drastically different from one another. While I do love this, Fennec and Boba standing together a perfect pairing. Is Boba a little bit too tall? I've met Demura Morrison and he's not the tallest guy in the world. Mingna is pretty tall, so standing alongside Boba, I think that the height difference may be exacerbated a little bit too much. I think that Hot Toys were maybe too kind to Tem and gave him a bit of a height boost, as you saw in comparison to the other Bobas. They still look great together though, no question. As do these two, bloody hell, Chrome, Mando and Boba. Who would have thought they would look so darn good together, but they do. So if you wanted to display these two together, well, this is what that looks like. Okay, okay, the other comparisons were good as display options. This, this is great. Actually, no, scratch that. This is exceptional. Cad Bane alongside Boba, these two have a history, and I'm feeling that just off the figures alone. Could be the posing, could be me going crazy. Nevertheless, I reckon these two look Brilliant standing side by side. Cad Bane is significantly taller than Boba, exactly as he should be. Going over articulation, starting off with Boba's bucket, it is on an articulated neck, there's a ball joint at the bottom, and up underneath, it's on a double ball peg. Combined, looking forward to there, looking up to there, decent enough for a flight slash rocket firing pose. You also get swivel and pivot side to side. For the arms, you do have multiple layers to contend with. You've got the flight suit, then the shirt, then the vest, and then the flak jacket. So they are a little bit more restricted. Going up to there, going forward and back, there's also a butterfly joint at the shoulder that hinges up and down. Swivel at the bicep, double bend at the elbow going past 90, then tucked up underneath the gauntlet for the wrist peg, it's a hinge and swivel. The torso crunches forward and back, once again multiple layers, but this time also padding. You do get swivel and pivot side to side. The legs will go forward to there, there is minimal padding on the thighs, that's further than I expected actually. Going out to there, swivel at the upper thigh, soft ratchets at the knee, double bend going past 90. And lastly the ankles. It looks like you wouldn't get much range of motion, they might surprise you. They're on double ball pegs, the feet will go forward and back, swivel, and you get ankle tilt. Moving on to the three cool and three annoying things. 
The first annoying thing is, once again, the sand footprint display base, but what makes matters worse is that you only get a waist clamp and a flight pole. I get it, he comes with a jetpack and flame effects, still, the option to have a crotch grabber should have been a thing, seeing as we know this display base is compatible with them. The second annoying thing is look how good this looks, and unfortunately, unless you've picked up one of their other releases or you bought the head sculpt parted out on eBay, you can't really do this, and they've gone so far as to detail the inside of the helmet and fully paint it, knowing full well you will not be able to make use of that detail unless you pick up one of their other figures. Very clever hot toys. The third annoying thing is also sort of a cool thing depending on how you look at it. This guy is compatible with the hologram effects that came with the other versions of Boba. At the same time, he doesn't come with any of his own hologram effects, so while it is compatible, you're never going to be able to use it unless you do have those previous versions. The first cool thing is, let's be honest, nobody's a fan of reuse. This guy, he's predominantly new parts and pieces. The armor is new, the pattern for the outfit is new, the belt is new, the gauntlets are new, the jetpack is new, the helmet is new. Even the freaking hands are new, they have gone to town with new sculpt work. The second cool thing is, remember this? This was a step up granted over the little straps that you had to hook this thing on, those were super frustrating. The magnets just weren't strong enough, and the jetpack was very loosey-goosey. Finally, they have cracked the code, we have the perfect 1-6 scale Boba Fett jetpack attachment method. It's guided with the magnets, but they do not do all of the heavy lifting. There's this locking mechanism where you slide the jetpack down, then you peg it in place, and this jetpack is not going anywhere, it is super secure. The third cool thing is they didn't use pleather for the boot guards, I'm really happy about this because these look gorgeous, and the last thing you would want is for them to peel and crack and degrade over time. They used fabric for the quarter scale version, this one they went sculpted, and in my opinion, this was the right call. Wrapping up on the Book of Boba Fett, Boba Fett. It's a bit weird, isn't it, that the last figure in the line is also the main character from the line? Timing aside, this guy is brilliant. He's not perfect, and he's only a couple of accessories away from being the best Boba Fett figure ever in my opinion. If he'd come with the unhelmeted head sculpt, if he had closed fists, still a weird choice, and if he'd have come with the throne, this guy would have been a DX Boba Fett release all day long. He's close to being that, he's just not quite there. So much so that he really feels a little bit bare bones, at least he does to me. You might not care about any of that, and you just happen to really like this look for Boba, then go for it. Just from a figure perspective alone, I don't think you're going to be disappointed. This guy is pretty impressive. And the outfit, adding some tan leather in there, giving him this real cowboy western vibe, I think that was needed. They wanted to refresh the look for Boba, and slowly but surely they did in The Mandalorian and then in his own show. Finally, we ended up with this look, and from a pure aesthetic perspective, I don't have a ton of complaints. I just personally prefer the shape of the helmet and a couple of the armor bits and pieces on the throne version. That one just feels a little bit more nostalgic to me. That's the perfect blend between the original trilogy Boba and the new look for him. Whereas this, this is just turning the page. This is an all new chapter. Unintended. Book of Boba Fett. Now I got mine from toyswonderland.com. Link for that is in the description below. They have pay in for and a loyalty program. While you're down there, why not hit that subscribe bell notification icon and join button. If you like the sound of seeing your name in the end credits of my reviews. Like, comment and subscribe. We'll catch you in the next video.